Hello everybody, Richard Hart here with Bitcoin maximalist Giacomo Zucco. Am I pronouncing that right? Giacomo, Giacomo Zucco. Uh, oh. Zucco sounds a little bit like the scam coiner of the Zcash, but it's okay. I mean, everybody <laughs> says Zucco. So okay. Some people were calling you guacamole. I don't know why. Giacomo does not sound like guacamole, I don't think. Yeah, racist people, racist <laughs> Americans. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's funny. Americans like basically made up of mostly Europeans. So like, uh, you know, they shouldn't be too hard on other cultures. How's it going? Exactly. Yeah. So not super well. I feel a little bit sick today. So I apologize in advance for to the viewer if my performance is a sub pair. I mean, look at Richard is super. You're beautiful, suntanned, you. like you're perfect. And uh, yeah. also, uh, we already see that our internet connection is a little bit as asymmetrical. There is people accusing Richard of uh, of uh, tampering with the connection to prevail in the debate, but the reality is that maximalists, uh, become maximalists, are poor, and we cannot afford the same uh, the same level of connection that that you can. I mean, look at your chandelier, golden chandelier. It's not bad. There. Green candles, I, I don't man. have. Uh, yeah, it's okay, but it's golden and down. I, I don't have anything like that. So, so anyway, you, uh, you know, just a quick correction, mm -hmm. and then I, uh, you introduced me as a maximalist, but yes. for this debate, I will try to, to be free of labels for a while. I already okay. had some kind of uh, tension with the term maximalism in the last uh, uh, Baltic on Better conference, and I will try to uh, basically mm, be free of, uh, of uh, uh, labels if I can. All right. Well, I, saw, I mean, I saw you, I thought you self-labeled as a toximalist, like a toxic maximalist even. I did. It was like a, a crisis between um, toxic, max, toxic, and maximalist. But it was uh, it was before. Uh, I mean, Balticoni Badger in Riga changed my perspective in many things because okay. I've seen the kind of culture that I contributed creating, and uh, I'm not so sure that that's helpful for debate. I mean, nice. uh, I, I, I watched just recently. I watched the uh, your debate with uh, with um, uh, well debate with Peter McCormack. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> basically, what I see is that maybe we are becoming unable to keep our mind open and to acquire new information, reevaluate re our assumptions, and that may be um, not not good overall. So yeah, let's just introduce me. Like uh, I'm 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 a former Bitcoin maximalist, and I'm born again to the to open mindedness nice. and niceness. I got I gotta say that's uh, great. I, I I think that's really awesome. I I don't I don't think if you believe in Bitcoin and you want to see Bitcoin do well in the world, I don't think being an asshole about it is effective. If it was effective, we'd have more users, you know? I I I I think that you have to be friendly and political and nice and speak the language other people speak, you know. Um it, it it's it's just better. Like it's better for Bitcoin if people are a little bit nicer about it. Is my opinion. <clears throat> I noticed that mo most altcoiners are indeed. I mean, we we like to blame them, but most of them are actually uh, nicer to people, especially to new buyers. And uh, I mean, even just that that attitude toward technical feasibility. The, the Bitcoiner will always tell you, you cannot do that. That doesn't make sense economically. That's not how money works. Uh, or it's not secure, it's not private, it's not anonymous, you are doxing yourself. Well, users, they, they don't want to hear this. They don't want, they want to understand where, where the value is for them. How, how, how can they become rich, basically? That's what I, I agree want. with everything you've said. You know, everything is design trade-off. So if users want to sacrifice security for throughput and they know that's what they're doing, I think that's fair. If users want to sacrifice privacy for convenience and they know what they're doing, I think that's fair. I don't, I don't think that everyone, you know, there's a reason we have dump trucks and normal trucks and sports cars, and we have different forms of vehicle to achieve different goals. And it's not fair for a, uh, a two, a two door car maximalist to tell, you know, SUVs, they shouldn't exist, you know, like everything fits a purpose, <clears throat> some yeah. more than others. So may I ask you uh, a couple of questions because sure. you asked questions to the to I, I, was, I didn't see all your videos. I've seen mm -hmm. a couple yesterday mostly. All so right. why you asked some guests why the, do they like Bitcoin? But why do you like Bitcoin? What do you uh, what do you really like and still like about that? I, How, I only, I only what like is that good the price goes Bitcoin. up. 
I only like that the price goes up. Everything else isn't that good. So if you want to actually spend it, nightmare. No one accepts it. If you want to actually buy it, nightmare. High fees, AML, KYC, out the ass. You want to send it to somebody, nightmare. Docs is your balance. Docs is every transaction you've ever done. You got to route it through Monero or something else to even to spend it properly without giving away all your info. So that's a lot of things that, that I don't like. And then the one thing that I do like is that the price goes up. So it's like, I wish it was anonymous. I wish more people accepted it. I wish it had higher throughput. I wish you could do other ticker symbols on it to do a little bit of DeFi. I wish it had a stable coin attached to it. I wish you could do general purpose computing on it. I wish we had useful proof of work. I, I wish, you know, all those things, but you know, it, they're just incompatible, right? Like you, you can't have, you can't do all the, you can't have a convertible dump truck SUV combo mix, right? You can't, you can't shove all those features onto Bitcoin without incurring extra attack surface and confusing brand awareness. And like, there's, you just can't do it. So if you want like all that extra stuff, you kind of need other things, right? So I, I invented this. So that's what, what you have done. So what, yeah. what you have done is to solve all these problems. So you no, have not, created not all, which... just some, like just, just one or two. Like the thing that I built doesn't have anonymity at all. Um, you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do useful proof of work. You know, there's some advantages to it, but, but it doesn't do all the things I'd like. <clears throat> so you mostly fix like, uh, if I'm, if I'm corrected, if I understood you correctly, you, you think you fix it mostly true proof because you're using a far superior platform, which is Ethereum, which has like super fast blocks well, and I you fix it. Uh, uh, so and what else did you feel? Uh, decentralization of mining because well, we should uh, say, Ethereum is more well, We should say what we're talking about. The viewers might know. So I, I invented a coin called Hex, and Hex is an ERC-20 token on Ethereum. And you would think that that's like simple, right? Anyone can make an ERC-20. Yeah. But it turns out that if you want to make a stupid ERC-20 that's just a ticker symbol, it's five minutes. But if you want to do computation and, and use the actual like limit of the ability to compute on the network, it's nearly impossible. Like it took, we, we got delayed about a year, year and a half just because it was so hard. So, you know, when you, when you think about it, all a blockchain does is give you an interface where you can reduce your number on your user interface and it increases someone else's number. And we call it a transfer. And then we just burn a lot of electricity to make sure that you can't cheat and do that twice when you should have been able to do it once. And that's it. That's all it is. And everything else is a bunch of abstraction that has to be done to make sure that it can perform those goals. I guess there's some other features on there like check lock time verify, which almost no one uses, multi-sig, which almost no one uses, you know, on the retail side. Um, but the core, the core feature is I can reduce my number and make your number go up. That's it. Right. So it, blockchains in general are actually just really slow, really expensive, shitty databases. And they're, they're actually built on other databases. So the Bitcoin blockchain used to be built on Berkeley DB. Now it's built on level DB. Now level DB. No, it used yeah. to be built on Berkeley DB. Then they switched it to yeah, level then, DB. Yeah, then, yeah, with Mike Hearn introducing the, the bug that uh, almost split the, net, that, that split the network, yeah. And then You're what right. I hear so, is that level DB is actually a retarded choice as well because it's optimized for writes and blockchains barely ever write and they read all the time. And so if you get into the Bitcoin core code, apparently there's just a shitload of hacks to try and route around how much level DB wasn't even the right choice for the database format. So now which uh, <laughs> fundamental database is Hex using since it's a, it's a ERC I actually don't know. on Ethereum? Like, I, don't so know what, you, uh, I don't know what uh, a Parity or Geth uses internally for their, uh, for their database management. I'm not, even, I'm not sure. But you assume that it may be more uh, innovative and faster because in general, the community, know. you see that as more vibrant, as more, uh, as more advanced, uh, open to technology, right? That's well, my perception of your... So I, I think that Ethereum, I think Ethereum is more secure, which is an outrageous statement to most people to hear it because they don't actually understand blockchain security. So how most people understand blockchain security is they think that hash rate equals security, right? Because they're sold this idea that, you know, 51% attacks are the threat, but they're wrong. Yeah. The real threat is bugs. Yeah, if, if the, if the, yeah, if the same person is actually keeping all the hash rate, that doesn't right. help anyhow. Exactly. So it's not the amount of hash rate. Yep. You say the real threat is bugs. And, and while yes. Ethereum had some bugs, for example, the parity, the party uh, multi-sig wasn't, uh, wasn't bug an Ethereum was bug. 
wasn't an Ethereum bug. Okay, so, bugs of the smart contracts highly facilitated by the so, way the, the, the no, structure is done. But no, anyway, let me know. But you think that now we are starting disagreeing? I don't want that. So let me okay. get and back we've agreed on everything so far. Like it yeah, seems like I, on, total agreement. So far. absolutely everything, yeah. and we agree on this as well because I think Ethereum is indeed uh, more secure because because even if I think that Solidity is a security nightmare. Uh, and is. that this uh, rich statefulness in general is a very stupid meme. But in Ethereum, if everything goes wrong, and it also involves the uh, the main stakeholder of, of Ether and other platform like uh, Vitalik and the other guys, they will roll back the chain as they already did in order to fix it. So I, it's secure. I would agree. I, mean, I would agree. That I would agree with that a, a year or two ago. But now we've got tests, real world tests that show that it's not the case. So the most inside guy in the world, the guy who wrote Solidity, is Gavin Wood. And Gavin Wood runs and founded and CEO of Parity, I think. And I think he also uh, is in he, charge he, of Polkadot. And he lost yeah, hundreds of the millions of that, dollars. Yeah, right. exactly. They're so they were the going to roll back the chain. The they rolled back for him. But they're not. So the, the most inside guy in the world possible, the guy who wrote Solidity, he's fucked for hundreds of millions of dollars, and they're not rolling back the chain for him. That's the best real world proof that the, the chain ain't gonna get rolled back. You know what I mean? So, but, but Solidity was written by the same guy is actually, I mean, you trust Solidity because of the I don't trust of Solidity at all. I, I don't trust Solidity at all. I mean, it, Solidity is a nightmare garbage language that, that's very shitty. And we have worked very, very hard to make sure that we've routed around the shittiness, right? So you know, it, it, it's integer math. And so you have to maintain precision. So you have to inflate all of your numbers to be very large numbers to do division and still have precision, right? You, there's just, there's a million pitfalls using Solidity. Now, to be fair. It's not deterministic. Yeah, it's not really deterministic. It's based on JavaScript with, right. the, uh, it's, which is itself it's bad. very, very. It's super bad, but, yeah. but Ethereum is more than, than just Solidity, right? You can use, so what Ethereum really is, is the virtual machine. And the virtual machine can run more than Solidity. So there's other, you can choose other languages that compile into EVM code that you can run on Ethereum. And they're even upgrading the virtual machine as well. So like Ethereum is more than Solidity. And then what we were talking about earlier, like how Parity killed themselves, the Parity multisig hack was just because he didn't write the word private when he declared, you know, who could run the, the creator function to create and destroy the contract. And so someone else came along acted as though they were owner because it was a public function anyone could call and told the contract to kill itself. So the Ethereum network itself had nothing at all to do with some other developer using it, not writing the word private where he should have, right? So ERC-20s are responsible for five of the top 11 cryptocurrencies by market cap. EOS launched as an ERC-20 and then got on their main net. BNB launched as an ERC-20 and then got on their main net. Uh, USDT Tether used to run primarily on Bitcoin. Now it runs primarily on, as an ERC-20 on Ethereum. It used to run on Bitcoin on the Omni network. Uh, TRX uh, launched on Bitcoin and then did their mainnet. And then Ethereum runs itself, right? So like... So when you talk about bugs, uh, you are, I mean, you are, you are, you feel safe about fundamental infrastructure of Ethereum, yes. but not just about smart well, contracts, but well, your smart got, contracts they've got better are, 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 are fine. Because well, we've got ours audited three times, two security audits and three one times. mathematics audit. Yeah. So the, the uh, they're all public, right? They are all, yes. we, we can review all of them. Yeah, the, the code is public. One. The code is public and two of the audits are public, one economics and one uh, security. But I'm still under NDA on the chain security audit, which is the best one. Okay. So I- The, the best one is under is still under right. an NDA. But, okay. the, but the weird and thing you, is- Sorry, we, who are you? The, Mm -hmm. You also spoke uh, when we were discussing with with mm -hmm. Stefan. You you say that your developers are that basically the Bitcoin developers are a very uh, sad small bunch, and you have a lot of very uh, badass developers. Uh, Who are your developers? Are they I didn't say that about around? the Bitcoin developers. I said that there were a few. I, I think the Bitcoin developers are extremely smart. Like they're they're very very good at what they do. They're just not very many of them. So I I have great respect for the Bitcoin developers. I just. I defend them more than anyone. Like I, I, I think that they should be spoken of very highly. These guys don't make a lot of money and they create really amazing stuff for everyone else to use for free. Why everyone else is getting rich. The exchanges are getting rich. Mining hardware companies are getting rich. Ponzi schemers are getting rich. Everyone's getting rich, but the most important people, the developers who do the work for free. Like I, 
I, great, I have great respect for open source developers in general, and particularly Bitcoin developers. There's just not very many of them. You know, it takes nine months to get up to speed with the code base to even make your first yeah, useful have, commit. Right. And it's spaghetti yeah. code. So, so when we talk about like why I think Ethereum's more secure, it's never had an inflation bug. Bitcoin's had two, and it sounds like well, you know, it's a well, Ethereum <clears throat> is an inflation bug. I mean, you the, the supply is not predictable; they can change it. So it doesn't have. It's like you know, I live in Switzerland now, and they say that Switzerland doesn't has an army because Switzerland is an army. So it's the same with inflation bug in well, Ethereum. You cannot have but, an inflation but, bug in a currency which is designed to inflate. Uh, without any kind of uh, of cap based on the decision of a centralized committee. There's a oh, very, there's a very important to, difference yeah. between the inflation bug, which you're describing, which is a, it benefits everyone equally the same. You're just changing the rate at which it inflates, more or less, right? I mean, maybe the miners are slightly advantaged, but they're trying to kill them off entirely. So how advantaged is that? They're trying to destroy them. They've already given the miners a pay cut, and they're trying to get rid of miners entirely, you know, um, with proof of stake, and they're crippling them on the way there with uh, changing proof of work to get rid of ASICs. Like, this is a lot of anti minor behavior. So, I, I would say that that type of change of which you're speaking, which is a, a, a community decided, and I, you would say, you know, it's too centralized, but I don't think it is. But even if it was, you know, it benefits all the participants roughly the same. Whereas the inflation bugs we're talking about in Bitcoin only advantage the hacker. Right. And it's not fair to compare yeah. those two things. So, yeah, I'm trying to keep not maximalist here. So I'm making okay. an effort. A, a past me would have said that maybe some some insider in the foundation deciding mm -hmm. for a, a, a monetary uh, issuance, a schedule change, may profit from this change if they know that in advance because they are just a bunch of insider uh, speaking by phone. But but that that is the, the, I, the old I think, me. I mean, I, me I, I actually agree with agrees with you. Actually, yeah. you are like uh, what you're creating basically is something very centralized like you have uh, or somebody for you has the control of of, uh, of an address that actually gets uh, yep. a, a copy of every reward yep. so basically you, you can get bonuses yeah basically right. that will control See, minimum 45 percent of the total supply indefinitely 30 35 correct? 35 is the models that i show so th it, it low yeah 35 to 39 is the models that i did so let me let me, to thirty nine. In the models that so I did, that's my good, right? Be because wrong. you were saying <clears throat> you need the centralized uh, guy that can be held accountable. Because it's bad to have Satoshi uh, disappear because you don't have anybody accountable. While you uh, are the whale, the whale middle. that every so. So okay. so there's a you're nuance here. You're not anti here. whale. No, I'm I'm anti old whale. I'm I'm, I'm pro new whale. You're for so, the new whale. Exactly. So we're and not socialists. Your, your whale, your whale punishment function in the code mm -hmm. will punish only the old ways yes. or will also punish your your 39 percent uh, mm. uh like uh, supply control I'll, I'll go over all of this I'd like total transparency sure. I, I don't mind talking about all this stuff so okay the the difference you have to understand the difference between economic centralization and network centralization network centralization breaks censorship resistance so that's bad right Economic centralization can be very good. It depends on the behavior of the, the hegemon. A uh, hegemon is like a fancy word for like person that has the most of a thing. So if, uh, if you look at the price performance of Lumens, they had 80% of their mm -hmm. supply in a foundation and they went from nowhere to top 10 cryptocurrency and made everyone a lot of money and handed out a lot of free coins along the way and yet is totally centralized from a network perspective and totally centralized from a, you know, everything's in the foundation perspective. And it worked fine, right? Um, other things like XRP, if you look at their price performance, you know, they went up like 433X in 2017 with uh, I think 60% of their supply in the hands of a foundation. And I dare you to so make... So whales are you. good if the whales are smart and they behave good. So you right. will be, or somebody appointed by you will be the new whale and it will be good because you are, I mean, so... I can't give expectations. I can't give expectations because the high test and the security laws. I can just point to you to other coins that have done very, very, very high ROI and very yeah, short term terms with high... So let me say, let's say you <clears throat> convince me. So, mm -hmm. okay, you're right. We need a responsible Satoshi stepping up like you do in order to, 
to be the good whale uh, c controlling the um, half of the supply, let's say 39. So why limit yourself to 39? Why can't you just, I mean, if that's good, why can not you go to 90% and just play the sure. central bank and yep. control everything? It would be, so I could create if you, if you a better about, version of X. If you care about ROI going up, so here, here's the way, you, like, so the design intention of Hex is maximum ROI appreciation. That, that's its design. That, that's its primary thing. It got a bunch of other things, auxiliary, just because they helped that, right? So it's the world's first blockchain CD. Well, that's cool, right? And it, it pays miners less. Okay, that's cool. And it, it has all these other really amazing things in it. But really, to me, those only matter as much as they help the price appreciation, right? And so how do we get the price so to you're, go up? You're designing it in order to go up in price yes. fast, guaranteed. Yeah. So no, the design, I, there's no I guarantee. Mean, like, no, no it, guarantee, it could right. go to zero. Yeah. I don't know, right? Like, it, human beings decide on this. It, so because I can. Because I, I think I've seen on the website something like it's yeah designed to go up. Yeah. It's uh, the, it's math, and so you were very sure when when you built the website about the. Well, let's well, say you don't guarantee it, but it's no, designed like, to I, go. I tell you what's to give possible. Some kind of performances. Yeah. I tell you what's possible. I tell you the design attention. I tell you the features yeah. which which should, you know, lean on human emotion to cause that to happen. And then it may never work, right? Like Bitcoin, Bitcoin's up over 750,000 X right now from a penny to $7,500. In 2017, it was up 2 million X. It's designed to do more than that. And Bitcoin has two pumpamentals. It had a double click in EXE to get freemium coins like a coupon, right? So it had freemium onboarding, like a free to download casual game. Bitcoin used to have that. And it had a pumpamental on the economic side, which is not in the white paper, that the inflation rate would drop in half every four years. So Bitcoin has two pumpamentals, freemium and reducing inflation rate, inflation rate. But the actual inflation was very, very high. No one realizes this. We're at around 4% inflation now after the inflation has dropped in, in half twice over 10 years. Well, four times two times two, well, that's 16% inflation earlier on, right? Oh, so, okay, sorry, if I, if I go interrupt ahead. you just a second, no, go, go back to the design. So sure. you're designing, the, you design Hex in order to mm -hmm. go up and give, hopefully, if everything works as expected, to give some kind of returns. Like you, you, you said something like possibly 100,000 X returns. The, the quote on the site is 10,000 X in two and a half years. And we're just okay, looking so at Okay, so why what, don't, mm -hmm. so That's what just is what the trade of stopping you? Uh, why not? Uh, designing it in order to do twice that, for example, like uh, uh, well, 200,000 I mean, in half the time, because it's, it's just design, right? You can design something sure. to go up. So yeah, you can, you can, quote, to go you can quote any number you want there. Bitcoin's designed to do millions of percent and did it, and not percent X, right? So like 2 million X is really 2 billion percent. Bitcoin really did that, and it's designed to do more because it wants to replace all currency. But just no one quotes. So you the could design it to go sure, even higher. I could put higher. any number there. I think this sure, is the. So there. this is the probably the, the good moment to to give you. I, I told you that I, I was not going to shield anything, mm -hmm. but actually, I mean, uh, I'm shielding something because I have a new idea. Uh, it, there's already a, a website. Basically, it's uh, it's this. It's zaxbox.win, <laughs> and it's uh, and basically so so far is is still not exactly what I want. It's still a, an embryo. But it's designed to do a little better than Hex because sure. uh, it's uh, based on a very, very uh, reviewed and appreciated smart contracts. It's called Ponsico, uh, www.ponsico.win. It's by Josh Cincinnati. It's, it's one of the, of the best smart contracts there. Cool. And, um, and so uh, basically, I already created something better than Hex. And I think that the, the most important things out of this conversation should be that the viewers and the readers of the comments they, they have to learn that they can also do better. Yep. They can go beyond that. Indeed, I, I don't want to be greedy. And on this website, uh, zaxbox.win, I created a tutorial in order to uh, go even beyond. You can create something which is designed to do twice hex and, uh, you know, centralized uh, origin address. Let's just have two. Uh, like half of your team is secret. Left has... I think all of my all team is of secret, the team actually. Secret. Like... All of Oh fuck! Then you beat me to to that already. Yeah. But I okay, mean, so uh, so uh, do, would you like to to try? I mean, if Zaxbox that win proves to increase better than Hex, will you change your short and your and your and your so necklace I, to? I I think I think it's very. Uh, like, I also have some mm -hmm. nexus. Okay, 
just to just to be on the same ground here. So, okay, now I feel I like it more respected by you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't nice, know what right? they are, but I like it. Yeah, look, uh, cryptocurrencies not really go the symbol, up. But... Cryptocurrencies go up retarded amounts of percent. It's insane. A comedy coin made as a joke called Dogecoin. Literally, the founder describes it as being described as a joke. Uh, it's worth a quarter of a billion dollars. That's the real world that we live in right now, today. And as a matter of fact, I published a chart earlier today that shows that its price performance is nearly identical to Bitcoin's. From the downside perspective, Bitcoin dropped 91% or 80, 84% and Doge dropped 91. And then uh, now this last drop from 14K to 7K or 6,500, Bitcoin dropped uh, 55% and, and Doge dropped like 57% uh, or something. So it's like, so, so the difference between Bitcoin so and Doge is about the same stable store value. So I, I think I think anyone can start their own currency. And, and if you can get adoption, like have fun, go get rich, right? Like a lot of other people did, right? Like, That's yeah, great. Oh, well, well, when you say you, <clears throat> yeah, I have to clarify. When you say you, it's not really me designing the website. Uh, I don't know who he is because it's a, you know, it's a security law matters. It could be like an old priest in the, in the third <laughs> world designing the website. Yep. If you if you check in the who is, it's not really my website. Uh, the, the Z <laughs> in Z box, in Zach's box, the, the Z is for zero knowledge okay. because there is actual zero knowledge of where the funds are going. Nobody knows. Okay. You may suspect something, but you don't know that. You can do so chain analysis knowledge. and figure it out, I'm sure. I mean, there's no, there's no amount of, it's very hard to get anonymity out of these things. So No, but this is the trick. It's on Ethereum. It's an ERC-20 token. And Ethereum already have ready, as you said, a ZK NARC contracts. They are not production yet, but they are ready to go. So it's not like Bitcoin where well, everything, some of them everything are. is reasonable like forever. Zether is published and, and works. Exactly. It just uses too much gas. So like, I just trust mm. Vitalik and he will make the, I mean, uh, not me. The old priests in the third world just trust Vitalix to, to make this uh, stuff anonymous enough to get away with it. I'm, so I'm sure it will not have any problem with that. Apparently, there's a, a finished, an EIP that was rolled in this last fork that happened yesterday. Apparently, mm. you can atomic cross swap to Zcash like directly. It's like an EIP that was executed, which I haven't even read about it. Like a guy that I know that promotes Monero on stage, he, uh, he told me about it. Because I asked him, I'm like, dude, what's what's going on with Ethereum? Like, how do you get an anonymous? So on this you see, stuff? Th there are a lot of opportunities <clears throat> for these priests in order not to get caught. I'm I'm very optimistic I, for him. We don't I, I'm we just don't have a, to. I'm like, just a promoter. We can we can talk about these things like in a non-parody matter if you wish. So a lot of a lot of Bitcoiners believe that the government should mind their own business and that they should be able to manage their finances as they wish and perform commerce with whoever they wish, and not have to ask the government for permission. And so sometimes if, if you want to build things in this world, the government can screw you up and you have to get the, you have to play by the rules or you'll end up in court, right? So I, I would love, imagine this, ICOs make yeah. billions of dollars making you promises and then just giving you nothing. Do you know how easy it would be for me to give you promises? It would be very easy. You never gave promises. Right, yeah, but it would right. be very easy to do. And do you know how much more money the contract would get if I did? Four times, 10 times? Some large number of more money, right? But I am doing the legal thing and protecting the system from regulatory risk uh, uh, by Richard, doing I'm these sure you're doing that. I'm, I'm sure you're doing that for ethical reasons as well. I mean, the reason you're not promising anything to anybody, it's not just the law. I think that inside of you, you have a very strong ethical threshold that you you, you well, will I, never, I don't think anyone uh, knows what the right. price performance of any cryptocurrency will be and so yeah they could all go to zero like yep and they they all drop 85 percent every three years anyway so even if you get the best one that's been around for the longest you're gonna you're gonna have an 85 percent drawdown at least yeah so you're right. it's like so since, since we have since we agree <laughs> on anything can I can I use your platform to illustrate to to the viewers the the characteristic of my website? Can you put the website on? I don't have a, so we can I, go through. I can't. I don't have that ability. I've never set it up because uh, I'd have to clear right. everything else and make sure I didn't leak data and all that. And I've never got around to it. So let otherwise, me, I would let go to your you site. Can, you can do it on your site if you want. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can do it uh, here. Right. So uh, if you can, uh, yeah, exactly. 
So it's still a little bit provisional. Uh, it's the first uh, probably zero sum copycat meta scam, improving the hex scam to make it even more scammy. <laughs> uh, so hold on, hold on. Uh, I gotta drag. I gotta drag your screen over to get it to show. Yeah, well, you could drag you. it left a little bit. If you drag it left a little bit, I think it'll it'll show. Oh, because it's uh yeah. Just but, drag it a little left. Because I don't. If I don't want. I don't want to move my thing because then it'll put you somewhere else. If you just drag your window, your browser window to the left yeah, a little yeah. bit, just over the. I have to go there. back to the. I have to go back to the stop sharing though because. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah. Well, you can turn it back on in a second. Wait. Ah, uh, this is embarrassing. All this preparation. Okay. Take your time. I like. I like that we're getting some content here. Oh, you're wearing one of those yeah. Vitalik shirts too. That's funny. He's wearing the the rainbow unicorn shirt thing. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, well, let me get back into the. All right. Did you just disappear? You just disappeared. Hello. Uh. I'm going to try and uh, hit him on Telegram here. Oh, all right. He's back. Okay, okay. You back? Uh, let, yeah, but it's uh, right. okay. That was too much. I was punished by technology because I was too aggressive in yeah. monetizing my... Uh, so I should say, I should say for people that are interested in uh, in making copies of Hex... It is not open sourced. So Ethereum's not? open source. No, it's not. So Ethereum's open source, and when that yeah. uh, network gets upgraded, Hex benefits from it. However, the Hex contract itself is not open source. So if you Google the word no license with no space, then you can read about what that means. And what it means is if you copy it, you get sued. If you, like, you know, basically it, it wow. means that you can't copy it. They can do so, illegal uh, things, whoever right? Creates, like, <clears throat> whoever creates that website, uh, zaxbox.win, should uh, actually put a disclaimer like you shouldn't copy the, uh, the hex code because you may get sued, right? Well, I mean, in theory, I would imagine it would be hard to enforce. So I think if you tried to rip hex off, the problem you would get is you wouldn't be able to list on any good exchanges because they don't want to get sued because there's real money to be attacked there. So, and the history of forks is not very good, like Ethereum Classic versus e Ethereum or, you know, Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin. They trade at like 2%, 3% usually. So it's not, it's not Hacking really. Maximalist exchanges. Yeah. They are well, they just want to not go out of business, you know? Innovation. Well, I mean, in yeah. Ethereum, there, there's more that are willing to play the game because they're distributed, right? Like, so there's a lot more DEXs. So you could be shady on a DEX maybe, but like if you want to use a centralized, uh, exchange that has, you know, real bank accounts and real faces attached to it, then they're not going to list a, a stolen code thing. So I like, like, okay. Mm -hmm. You are reacting way better than I expected. I really, I mean, you're a master in this stuff, really. I, I mean, I do my <laughs> best, but you're a master, Richard. I don't, so, uh, I don't disagree uh, with anything you've said. I, I agree with every yeah, single course, thing but... you've said. So like, if we find <laughs> disagreement, we can argue and like shit, but like, we have to no, actually no, disagree it's... on something. We mm -hmm. we agree so much on everything. That's I mean the reason I, uh, the reason I am not I, I didn't create this, but I am actually promoting this and shilling this everywhere. Zach Sparks mm -hmm. that win is that I agree with you so much that I'm taking your path and I'm just bringing it to the next step. So I'm totally with cool. you ab about everything. Mm -hmm. And actually I I agree with you so much that I think that for the viewers would be an added value to see the the, the remaining. Sure. Uh, two and a half hour of uh, of uh, streaming with only you talking about yourself, <laughs> just like with Peter McCormack, because that was so great. Like half an hour with somebody, that somebody comes to you as a scammer. I don't. I I would never call you a scammer, right? I think what you're doing is completely honest, and you know that deep inside. Thank you. But now you will have one hour and hour, or two hour and a half to uh, to actually uh, complete your uh, illustration of well, the project. Should I shouldn't we? I. I can't, like, everyone that watches my show, they already know everything there is to know about Hex. So, like, I would love it if we could talk about, or maybe I could learn some stuff from you, because I think you know more about Bitcoin than I do. 
we could talk about stuff that they haven't already heard, right? Like, like what? So I always say things about Bitcoin that may not be true, right? Like I say, look, the roadmap's not that aggressive. And if there is something good coming up, it's unlikely to get forked in because we had to fight overly hard to get SegWit, which was just a throughput increase and a, mail, a transaction malleability fix. So maybe we could talk about what things Bitcoin might have on the roadmap that are good and then talk about the likelihood that they could actually happen, right? Or you, you're qualified to talk about that stuff, right? Hello? God damn it. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone have a good internet connection? What the fuck? I guess I'll hit him on Telegram. Maybe he comes back. Hmm. I, <laughs> what's going on? Why am I getting performance arted anytime I talk to a Bitcoin dude? I don't get it. Well, you know what? I can't look up these things while I'm on stream. <laughs> 